Okay, morning guys, a little bit blowy, hopefully not making too much noise. Um, we're William Bay, but we're just walking down to Mad Fish Bay. The story behind it is, back in the 30s, two local fishermen came down to fish. There was two fish going crazy in the bay, so they didn't catch anything. So they called it Mad Fish Bay. Now, so... I hope you can see the colour of the water coming out in this as we go around. It's pretty spectacular. We're down near um, Denmark. With my keys. Um, yeah, it's amazing, amazing, amazing part of obviously uh, the south coast on. Uh, WA, but you can see that. I hope. Come down. So Denmark's back over there. The water is truly amazing. The clarity and the clearness of it. And I mean, how good would that be to have a swim in? This is the open ocean out there. It's all protected in here. Uh, it goes right round. Right round to there. Just trying to get out of the wind a bit. Come over into this area here. Hopefully it's a bit more sheltered. So, yeah, pretty, pretty special places along the west coast. I'll give them one thing. It is windy a lot of time you get out, but a pretty, um, pretty amazing spot. So we've just come around to another beach and uh, 10 points for anyone who guesses what it is it's Waterfall Beach aptly named because lo and behold there is a waterfall albeit probably the smallest waterfall we've seen in our travels but we're still down the same coastline at um Denmark, there's Indiana, the sand shoes on today. So, um, this bit of beach is obviously clogged a fair bit with people. That one's been pristine, like the only one's walked on the last really, this morning by looks of it. But yeah, here we are. What a truly wonderful, wonderful bit of the world this is. But probably just coming down to what this one's renowned for. We've been to a few of the other little beaches. This one's Elephant Rocks and Green Pool. Um, this is probably one of the two biggest touristy things. A lot of people here. There's hardly any in the other beaches. Lots here. So anyway, we'll go down and see what it looks like. So we're just down at uh, Elephant Rocks, which are all these rocks here. 
getting into the water. We'll go down the bottom in a minute, get another picture. But uh, yeah, well, I suppose they do look like elephants if you've got an imagination. Or been on the wacky grass. Uh, sorry guys about the wind we're just up here now at elephant rocks like i said earlier go up the top of this if i don't slip over slip all the way down to the bottom Elephants over there as well. Pretty nice. Alright, so now adjacent to Elephants Rock is Green's Pool, which is just down this track and around the uh, corner here. Uh, we'll see. I don't know what the wind's doing. Hopefully, it's not doing too much. But um, give you a bit of a look at just here first. It's a nice big deep pool there, but that's not Green's Pool. Green's Pool's around here. Yeah, I know. Around there, it's just amazing. Now this is Green's Pool down here. You can see there's just people. Well, not everywhere, but like I guess so. These are probably the two things they advertise around Denmark the most to uh, must see along with a few wineries and different things um, a few people in the water not us today it's too bloody cold um, but the water does look very inviting to be honest with you there's actually um, reading about it today there's actually coral coming into this area now which is interesting so they suggest that you bring your snorkel gear and go for a snorkel there's no fishing allowed um, yeah like really what a spot it's even just in there I don't know the currents would be like between the rocks but still pretty good So today, uh, a bit late leaving any, it's a bit humid today where we are, we're at a place called Castle Rock. Uh, I'm going to do the granite skywalk, which I'll give you a picture of. It's uh, this thing here. So... Uh, it's about 2.2 kilometer return. Um, it's going to be a bit challenging. It's class three, uh, sorry, class four, all the way to that um, Skywalk, and then uh, goes class five there. <coughs> and that's um, partly because it's a seven meter climb up a ladder. So this is. Uh, Actually, where we are, Porongorops, however you pronounce it. Um, so you can I'll just take that for my own purposes when we're going back through. Uh, yeah, so. Um, I don't know how long it's going to take. Uh, Jeanette struggles a bit when we get going with uh, asthma when it gets hilly. Um, but to her credit, 
once she gets up to where we've got to go. Um, sometimes it might worry. But anyway, we'll um, we'll start the track up. Uh, so this is where we are, and the track just starts up here, goes up through the bush. So yeah, should be good. Just take our time like we normally do. Two hours will probably be three and a bit for us. I'm already angry, so that's probably not a good thing. All right, we'll see when we get up there. So we just started on the track. It's not a bad track. Still uh, 400 steps. We're up about 630, 670 metres we've got to climb, as in height over this track, over 2.2 2 k's, I think it was. Um, so yeah. Look at the track, it's not too bad, it's just uphill. Not halfway yet. A little bit to go. Steady as we go. We're over halfway. Takes its because it's fairly uphill and Jeanette struggles with her asthma so it's a slow trip for us but that's okay as long as we get there in the end we're getting close 0.7 to the skywalk 1.5 k's we've come so yeah we're well over halfway um, still got straight up there to go yet though can you see that? See the clearing through there. So it's still going to take us a bit to get up there, but at least we're well and truly halfway there now. Well, I'm tipping we're getting close to the top. It's back to flat again, sort of, but that's always just lulls you in your false sense of security. Probably can't see through there, but. Yep, we're up high, so, so, so we can see the sky finally. So we must be nearing the top. This is good. People coming up behind us. And that's a quick spin around. You won't be able to see that through that, I know that, but we're nearly there. I'll take it back just when I feel we're getting the close to the top. We've got to go up again. It's taken us a bit. That's two k's. Not sure what the time is, but I reckon it's probably take us an hour and a half. Maybe a bit longer to do that two k's. I'm not struggling. Yeah, might be able to see how through there. So we're nearly here. Was well, she practically? Yeah. Yeah, she was just saying she can't let her heart rate get up over 170. It was getting up there, so she had to stop. This this bit gets us up onto the skywalk, so we're we're here. Somehow we've got to work out how we're getting up these uh, things up onto the next platform. But anyway, we'll work that out when we get there. View this is our last step up this bit. I think Jeanette will be right with that. She doesn't like heights. But this is the first bit of it, I suppose. So I hope you can. Pick all that up, I know the GoPro's pretty lousy for distance. But yeah, pretty amazing view. So I get that there, we'll come around to the steps. Go up the steps. There goes Jeanette. So we've come up through this track, it's probably the <laughs> the most interesting bit, a few of these things on the side, but and the view out through the back there. Sorry about the wind. But we're up here. The skywalk goes round, all the way round. Get out of the wind a bit down here. The things people do for tourists. Most of she's out of a walk. But uh, this is what you get when you get up here. Just a piece of infrastructure running around the outside of the rock, and then we're about to run over the edge of the rock so it's pretty much going straight down there oh, so that's here and you can 
see down through there. They've spilled out the side. I know those people do those things. But uh, you've got no wind, so oh, probably a little bit. Uh, anyway, we've got here. As you can see, it's uh, just stuck onto the side here. Stuck in down below us. Guys, we're at uh, Fitzgerald National Park at uh, Cave Point, looking back to Mount. What is it, sorry? Sorry? Mount Barron. Mount Barron, back that way. I don't know how good it's going to come up with this. This is just truly really amazing. I'm just tucked in in a minute, so I'll walk out. You're going to get a lot of wind as I walk around this way a bit. That's going. Until I'm near Hopeton. It's just near Hopeton in WA, so we're here for a couple of nights. Some people swimming down there, got the beach all themselves. I don't know if it's really swimming weather, but it's really magnificent this coastline, it really is. Um, but I'll go out here, going to get a bit of wind, but we'll see how we go with the... Um, let's see if it picks up the things a bit better. It's no one that sort of hangs out a little bit, but not that much. But the wind comes obviously around that bend there, picks up as we come out, as you can hear. See the rocks down below. So going back around. And it's obviously cave point for a reason. There's a big cave down through there. Um, yeah. Very, very nice. So this is looking to the west. There's these beautiful little beaches just scattered all the way through here. You can get down to them. This road's um, sealed all the way. It closed all the four wheel drive, four wheel drive tracks. I think that's um, because of they had a fair bit of rain a while ago. And something to do with dieback. Um, so maybe it's just this time of year that they shut it. I don't know. But yeah, so that's a little beach there. Couple of people in the water. Don't know why it'd be freezing. We're right out on the peak now, the point. So the cave's back down in, in there below us. Get down a bit lower, trying to keep out of the wind a bit. Gives you an idea of the coastline going around. There's an inlet over there, and we're staying back around on that point way over there. So. As I say, going our way, we've got their obligatory little stone mounds. It's going back down the way. Uh, good morning, all. Uh, hit a little bit of a snag. We're camped up at Mason Bay, um, just a shy camp. Run by the council. It's about. I don't know, 10, 11 sites, all unpowered, it's got to be self-contained. The beach is just over there, uh, nice beach, had a bit of a fish, just a few bites, not much. But the, uh, let's show you sort of, well, there's only two or three caravans, campers in here. So they've got a camp host and that as well, usually run for a minimum of about a month, so we're camped up in here. Uh, but the old girl, the ranger, she's uh, she's had a bit of an issue of late, and um, the noisy gearbox is getting worse and worse. So we're heading back to Bremer Bay today. Um, 
got a great mechanic down there that's been searching high and low to sort us out. Um, we'll have a quick look, but we're thinking probably a new gearbox or re um, manufactured one. So that's going to be a bit of an expensive exercise, a couple of weeks. Um, so we're pretty much going to be uh, in Brema Bay from now until probably Boxing Day. So as long as we get there today, as I say, that's us holed up at the moment on the beach, which is just around that little bend there. Um, yeah, so interesting times ahead, but all good. We'll sort it out, get it done, uh, and get back on the road. She's the old um, truck. She's done well. She's done over 200,000 k. She's pulling a fair load, so. And unfortunately with Ranger gearboxes are an issue, so uh, as I say, we'll get it done, get it sorted, and get back on the road.